guys you're yeah, welcome back to my channel hope you guys are feeling good my name is Bukumi Bike Kran. so we are going to be checking out this video titled how Quran has changed the world a question and answer section let's watch guys Sheikh Husseini will now have a chance for the question and answer session as before we'll start with the first question from the front mic Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, my question is simple. We feel there is a distance between Quran and mankind because when I reach my home, I keep my Quran on the shelf because most of our brothers doesn't know how to handle Quran. They doesn't know what need to be done, what need not to be done while handling the Quran. Can you please explain these? What is the don'ts to Quran? Do's and don'ts to Quran, and tell the way how to get close to Quran, which changes the mankind. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Khair. If I'm not wrong, the brother is just asking how do we handle the Quran? How do we honor and respect the Book of Allah? There are many ways. Majority of the Muslim today, do you know how they respect the Quran, brother? The people that I know. Not here, inshallah. Hmm. This Quran, they keep in a high place. Very high. Hmm. And they wrap it with some beautiful clothes. And one Jumaat, every Jumaat, they bring it down and they kiss. And then put it back. Hmm. <laughs> one way. They love the Quran. They respect the Quran. But they don't read the Quran. Mm. They dare not even touch the Quran sometime. But that is not the way for you to respect the Quran. The Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad not in the form of a book but wahyu from Jibreel, from Gabriel. Iqra. So you must read. You want to honor the Quran, you must read the Quran. Of course, it is highly recommended before you open the Quran and read. You have wudu. It's highly recommended. It's not wajib. It's highly recommended. It's to have the wudu and then you read the Quran. When you read the Quran, you must read with a pure intention. Ikhlas lillahi ta'ala. And you read the Quran, Allah wants you to dabbur, slowly. Don't read like a parrot. Hmm. Read it slowly, ayah wa ayah. And after reciting, before this, Yasir Qadi have informed you. Yeah? And then after that, it is your duty to understand what you read. That's how you respect the Quran. Not just read without understanding. After understanding, it's your duty to act upon the Quran. If not, the Quran will be a hujjah against you. Hmm. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. We'll have the next question from the sister's mic. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh, Buddhism is becoming a very popular religion in the West. New age spirituality is becoming very popular and it's based on Buddhism among other things. Can you tell us why you chose Islam although you were raised Buddhist? Mm. And also, can you offer a prayer, a dua for Al Masjid Al Aqsa and Bayt Al Maqdis, which is now being destroyed as we stand here speaking about love and peace? And offer a prayer to our brothers and sisters who are defending it with their lives so that maybe one day we will pray in it inshallah jazakumullah it's a duty of all muslim brother and sister when you hear some muslim brothers some holy secret area is been uh, destroyed or been disrespect by other people for us to ask allah to help us at least to save our iman first and then may Allah save Al-Aqsa. About Buddhism, yes, now the main teaching of Gautama Buddha, we know what is Buddhism. Buddhism derived from the root word of Buddha in the Sanskrit word. 
reboot means the awakening. Mm. Okay. Now he, Guatama, suddenly want to find the truth. He have the awakening, but he do not know what is the truth. And he left the palace to seek for the truth. At the end of the day, Alhamdulillah, according to my understanding, he was making kalwa. Like how Moses making kalwa. How Prophet Muhammad making kalwa. And there he was enlightened by Allah. This is what I know. Hmm. When he was enlightened by Allah in the Sanskrit word called Buddha, the enlightened one. Hmm. The teaching of Buddha is only two. Sukkah wa Dukkah. In Arabic, Bashiran wa Nazirah. And his doctrine, the Dharma, now, after I became a Muslim, I understand the teaching of Buddhism, of Gautama Buddha, more than when I was a Buddhist before. Hmm. But it's Allah's Hidayah. I do not know whether he was a prophet, but I believe what Allah said, Because I don't find any of his teaching against the Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallahu Alam. Wallahu Alam. Sister, inshallah, we hope all the brothers, not only we are going to pray here, every day when you heard any bad news about what is happening to the Ummah, don't forget to pray for them. Anytime you hear a Muslim pass away, at least you say, Allahumma qfillahu warhamhu wa'afihi wa'fu'anhu. At least you say that, brothers and sisters. Yeah? We will pray for them. Amen, inshallah. But brother, you're saying that the teachings of Buddhism are the same as the teachings of Islam? Even though they have reincarnation and all these other things? No, they believe there is life like how we believe there is life after death. We believe in hereafter, they believe in hereafter. But there's a lot of bid'ah and kurafat in the teaching of Buddhism now. They have created a lot of changes and make a lot of changes. They said Buddhists, Gautama Buddha don't talk about God. Who said he don't talk about God? He worship. He worship something. Hmm. But people said he don't worship God. He don't talk about God. This is what they say, not what Gautama say. Now, you are asking me about my experience. Now, when I came to Islam, I found that Islam here to confirm also what was taught by Guatama. I never see anything against it. Is he a prophet? Wallahu alam bisawa. Because it's not mentioned in the Quran his name. And we know that the prophet have said only 25 prophets is mentioned in the Quran. There are more than that. There are 120,000 of prophets been sent. And only Allah knows where they were sent. So I'm here not to pass any judgment, but through the experience I've gone through, I don't find any of his teaching is against the Quran and the Sunnah. Mm. Wallahu alam bisawa. Jazakallah. The next question from their brother's mic. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Chinggis. I'm a university student. So my question is, we all know and we all believe that there is a destiny and everything is predestined. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing. And my question is, so why in the very end day, mankind will be judged by their deeds? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what I'm going to in like future 10 years or whatever He gives me in my life, he can put me like in a few seconds to Jahannam or Jannah. No. Hmm. Alhamdulillah, brother. We believe in what has been fated. The Qadar and Qada. And that is what the teaching of Buddha, Karma. In Buddhism, they call Karma. Qadar and Qada. Now, your question is why there is a judgment day? Is that what you asked me just now? Mm hmm. Yeah, is we have been fated what yeah, is going to happen Allah knows best so then why must Allah judge us again he know 
he know we go to hell or go to paradise why must he waste his time judging us again it's a beautiful question Allah Akbar Allah is here to show us how fair how just he is he know what we have been doing how good we are how bad we are how ugly we are mm. but maybe deep in our heart we still want to argue I think I am I'm not that bad I think God should be kind to me should be just to me so before we ask anything he makes sure that he is fair and just because one of the attributes of Allah is Allah mm. means he is just to show you that he is here to show you everything what Allah said for my yakmal misqala zarratin khairan yara wa my yakmal misqala zarratin sharran yara everyone you come even as small as an atom of good deeds mm -hmm. or bad deeds Allah will show it to you yes. so that you cannot say oh Allah you forget you remember I do this thing before you remember I help one poor lady no, Allah knows so here Allah is going to show us he's going to demonstrate his fairness to everyone that's why the judgment day is important you understand it brother yeah, yeah. inshallah as long as you do what you must do here what Allah want you to do sincerely for him nothing for you to worry inshallah Jazakallah Jazakumullahu khaira. That is all the time that we do have for the question and answers. So please, a big thank you for our dear Sheikh Hussein Yee. Alhamdulillah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi ashadu an la ilaha anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Once upon a time, before the Quran was revealed, all of you live like enemies, hit each other, fighting against each other, abusing each other. We should respond to the Quran. The Quran has changed us. Money cannot unite the heart. Gold cannot unite the heart. Only with the Hidayah of Allah. The Quran has changed people once upon a time who live in darkness to the Nur of Allah. Hmm. Wow. Our Quran has changed the world. This is a very, very interesting question. The first question that the guy asks is why is it that um, when you have your Quran, it's very hard for you to read it, understand it, and you know, you know, human beings sometimes we we tend to put other things ahead of God, but we should try as much as possible, even including me, we should try as much as possible to read, you know, the Bible, the Quran, because He alone is worthy of know our existence and the next question the lady was talking about buddhism wow buddhism means awaken Bud it means they are waking but they don't really know the truth they don't really know the light so you know and there's a lot of similarities between the buddhism and islam and the man actually explained it then last one the guy was like why is it that god you know judge according to our good deeds that's why the judgment day is 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 very important because God brought us to this earth for a purpose we are here for a purpose and we have to fulfill it one way or the other we have to fulfill our purpose because when we get to him we have to recount for all the things we've done the good and the bad so we should try as much as possible to you know, give out an helping hand and you know, show love you know it doesn't have to be material things per se your word of encouragement you know you know showing love you know it goes a long way it's not about material things alone if you have material things do so help the needy but if you are not in that position but you are in that position to put a smile on someone's face you know to give them an encouragement then do that it's very important thank you so much for watching don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you in the next one stay blessed bye